I'm Lisa Stone. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Parenting Aces. I've had the best time at the NCAAs these past 12 days and have seen the most incredible tennis, have met some amazing people and have had the chance to actually meet in person people that I've only interacted with digitally prior to this this event. So it's just been so much fun for me. And I wanted to use this week's podcast to give y'all kind of an inside look at the championships. And I talked to a couple of players, but I also wanted to talk to some parents and some of the people involved in making the championships happen. And so I think I've gotten a good variety of interviews for y'all to kind of give you a feel for what these championships are all about. If you've never had a chance to attend the NCAAs, please, please, please put this on your bucket list. It is one of the best events in tennis, not just college tennis, but tennis period. And I even heard people talking in the stands who have been to all the slams saying that the NCAAs just blows that experience away. So when we come back, I will get into our interviews for this week's Parenting Aces podcast. Tennisballs.com is your one-stop shop for all the latest tennis news, stories, and photos from around the world. Their talented writers share insights from the Pro Tour, the latest tennis technology, and behind-the-scenes looks at your favorite tennis tournaments and events. Check out Tennisballs.com. That's 10sballs.com. First up is Taylor Davidson, a senior at Stanford University, and Taylor is one of the biggest fighters I've ever seen on the court. She clinches matches all the time and, in fact, clinched the championships for Stanford in 2016. I watched her clinch again this year, and she's just unreal out there. She's such a fighter with such big heart, and I've known Taylor for a while. She and my son have been friends for quite a long time. They came through juniors together, and it's just so much fun to get to watch her compete and to have the opportunity to chat with her. So enjoy Taylor Davidson. I am here at the NCAA Championships at the University of Georgia in Athens with Taylor Davidson. And Taylor is graduating from Stanford this year. She is having a bang-up season. And Taylor, congratulations, first of all, on your win and the team win today. Thank you. So I understand you have a job when you graduate. Tell me what you're going to be doing. Um, So graduation is June 18th, I think, and then I'm going straight down to Redondo Beach to work for Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems. It's like a global defense company. Um, And my my job title is business analyst, but I interned with them last summer, and I did a lot of, like, asset management, property (laughs) stuff, financial stuff. So I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to be doing, but I have a feeling it will be like what I did in my internship. Very cool. How will your collegiate tennis career factor into what you're doing day to day in your job in the real world? Um, I mean, definitely leadership is my top thing that I put on on my resumes. And if I if I do a job interview with someone, uh, being on a team and going from a freshman to a senior um, is definitely a transition that you have to learn how to make. It's not just super easy. Um, and I actually was a I think I was a captain starting sophomore year all the way throughout senior year. So it really taught me how to be a team leader and how to figure out the personalities on the team and how to work with everyone and make everyone click at the right time. So that's definitely going to help me in the workplace eventually, <laughs> maybe not this year. And what about the transition from the juniors to college? Because you went across the country to college. That's a big change just in terms of the environment, the weather, everything, but also managing the responsibilities of being a tennis player and a student. Going from juniors to college was more fun on the tennis side of it for me because you're on a team and everything's magnified. All the all the emotions are magnified, so it's a lot more fun, at least for me it was. Um, being away from my family is hard. It's never easy, and we're on a three-hour time difference, so a lot of times I'll get out of practice and like be in the cold tubs, and they'll already be in bed, so I don't get to talk to them that much other than text messages. Um, 
it's just it's a transition again and everything I think factors into making you a better person in the end um, and initially I didn't even want to go across the country I wanted to stay in the south near home but it works out I mean I would I would never choose anywhere else yeah well Stanford's not too shabby <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So there are a lot of Stanford alums out here, tennis alums, cheering y'all on pretty loudly. What does that mean to you when you're on the court? It's really cool. I mean, to have people that have done the things that they've done, I mean, I, I can't even begin to list like how great they were as tennis players, and they're even better people, and they're doing so well in the real world right now. I mean, and they're all just mentors to us. They're like, if you need anything, if you need contacts, any help, getting a job, an internship, we're here to help. Um, it just means so much on so many different levels. I can't even begin to describe it. Talk a little bit about your relationship with your coaches because they're pretty incredible people themselves. Yeah, I mean, they're very different. They bring, I think there was actually an article published on our website a couple weeks ago about them. Yes. They really complement each other well. And it's interesting because this tournament we've switched up who coaches who a lot because usually Lily does one through three and Frankie does four through six. And they've been switching that up, which works for me because freshman year, Frankie was my coach. Um, so it kind of, it's, Lily's very calming on the court and Frankie gets you kind of really pumped up so it's very different based on where you are in your match um, I mean they just their knowledge of tennis is just unbelievable um, they know what to say when you're out there and you just have to listen to them and try to execute how does the coaching factor in at the collegiate level because obviously in juniors you don't get to have a coach on the court with you was that a hard transition for you and if so what did you do to kind of make it so that you could fight through those those challenges yeah it was it was a little bit different at first it's I think it's an easier transition so it didn't take too much to get used to um I mean it's really nice on a deuce point to be able to look over and your coach tells you where to serve and what to do with the next ball um so at that point all your your only job is just to execute um whereas in juniors you're having to make those decisions yourself based on patterns you recognize in the match and stuff so it definitely simplifies the strategic part um and if you're missing a few things they can fix technical issues um it's very helpful it just you, sometimes you have to be your own coach, though, especially in college, because sometimes they're not seeing something, and sometimes you just need to fix whatever you're doing yourself. Right. Talk about what your involvement will be with Stanford and Stanford tennis in particular now that you're finishing up and kind of moving on. Yeah, so I'm going to be in California still, so hopefully I'll get to go up and watch a lot of the matches. And I mean, obviously, everyone on the team now, I'm, I, know, I mean, I'm really close with all of them, so I would really like to be able to cheer them on. <laughs> Um, in their matches and if they come down to LA um, to get to watch them there and I just think I hope that I've left the underclassmen and even some of the upperclassmen with um, enough responsibility and, and know how to do things that they can just continue the legacy on I mean they've seen I mean they've seen from Hillary and Mallory and Lindsay all the people that are here they know what they do and hopefully we've continued that legacy well y'all have been pretty impressive so far in this tournament your freshmen have been unreal, mm -hmm. clutch, clutch players. What do you think it is that gives them the poise and the confidence to pull out these wins? They just click well with the nature of our team, and they click well at Stanford. Um, and I think they had, they had those attitudes coming in, and they were really good players coming in and they're just they're just capitalizing on that right now and they're just really blooming in the Stanford environment so it's really nice to see and I mean today they haven't been in this position Emily has Emma has not been in this position and she told us afterwards she was like I was so tight and I said you know what we got your back on days like that and I think it's really good that they experienced today because I mean I think Lample had four match points in her match yeah. so had she won that one of them wouldn't have even gone on the court. So I think it happened for a reason, and I think it was really good for them today. Yeah, it's awesome. So next up for y'all, Ohio State, I think? I think the winner of Ohio State and Texas Tech. I'm Which was positive. Ohio State. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. So then we play them next, yeah. And what, what are your predictions? I honestly do not know their team very well. I know Francesca. Um, I think a lot of the people that were on their team when we played them two years ago are still there. 
Um, so I, we're going to have to look at matchups, and we're going to have to go and talk about how to play specific people if we know anything about them. But honestly, I think if we just do what we do, we're going to be okay. We just need to we just need to keep our heads down and focus on us. So by the time this airs, the tournament, you'll be done with that match. Okay. So can, can you talk a little bit about what tonight's going to look like in terms of strategizing and planning for tomorrow? Because, this again, this won't air until after the match is over. Yeah, um, well, right now we're actually probably going to go ice bath as a team, um, get some food after that, and then probably do some stretching because I think a lot of us are going to need to be <laughs> need to be physically ready for tomorrow again. Um, we'll just, I mean, we're just going to be together. Some people might have some homework at Stanford for you. We're still not out of school. So um, it's just we're going to be going back, trying to revamp for tomorrow and get prepared physically because I think we're, we're pretty close mentally. Did you all have to do anything special to get ready to play indoors today? Because out of all the teams, you all were the only ones indoors. Yeah, we actually we were sitting around waiting for a long time this morning, and Frankie told us before the match this morning, he said, expect the unexpected because we didn't know if we were going to go inside, outside. They dried the courts twice completely, and then it poured. So we were just kind of sitting around. Like Some of us took a nap before the match. <laughs> uh, we hit on the courts, I think, for about 30 minutes this morning and then took a lunch break and then came back and warmed up. So it's good to be able to hit on them before the match twice. Um, and I don't think many people in our team have played indoors very much because we play in California. So <laughs> yeah. um, it was it was good to hit twice on on these courts and get adjusted to them. Great. Well, thank you so much. I know you've got to go get rested up, but uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. It was great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Next up is Elizabeth Milano, and Elizabeth is another young woman that I've known for quite a while. She and my son actually trained together in Atlanta for a little bit, and Elizabeth has kind of a unique story. She started off playing college tennis, but things took a bit of a twist, and I was so excited to see her at the NCAAs this year and to hear what she's been up to. So enjoy Elizabeth Milano. I'm here with Elizabeth Milano. She is a student at University of Georgia and working the NCAA championships. And Elizabeth, I'm going to let you tell our listeners a little bit about your background in tennis. So I've been playing tennis since I was about five years old. Um, I was always a tournament player, you know, from the start. Um, went to college, did the whole college thing for a year. Um, it didn't really work out how I thought it would, unfortunately. Uh, I thought I would be doing it forever but I still have tennis in my life. I teach three times a week up here in Athens at um, Jennings Mill Country Club teaching the little kids you know back to back to the basics you know so I do that and I've taught many camps over the summers and things like that so as much as I'm not you know in college sports anymore or in the tournament tennis anymore I'm still a part of it every single day of my life. I still I can't stay off the court. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about what happened in your college experience that made you decide not to continue playing? Because I think it's important for people to understand that, you know, it's it doesn't work out perfectly for everybody. Right. No, it definitely does not. It's not a perfect thing. Um, it's a really cool idea to start off with when you're coming out of high school. You're so young. You know, people want you. There's a coach out there that wants you. And, you know, you say to yourself, oh, like, they want me. I'm wanted. Let me jump on this. So I think that when, so I chose my school very like quickly. I, they wanted me immediately. I was like, okay. It was a school of 1,200 people in middle of nowhere, Maryland, and it was D1. So I thought, wow, cool. This is amazing. Great opportunity for me. And it just turned out not being what I wanted out of college. You know, you know, you have to differentiate between college and sports. Um, I think that's really important for people to do um, when you're in high school and going into college and choosing where you're going to go to school because that's four years of your life. You have to spend there. You have to be with the same people. You just have to make sure that you absolutely, truly love it, in my opinion, because I learned later on that I didn't truly love it, and I don't even think I did from the beginning. I think I told myself I did, but I didn't actually. So because of that, it kind of kind of changed perspectives a little bit. At what point did you decide to transfer? It was after, um, it was after my, 
it was after fall semester actually I actually didn't even I left after fall I didn't even barely last my freshman year I left and then I went to I went came back home to Atlanta and um, I went to perimeter for a little bit and I was actually on the tennis team there um, just to help me pay for school and things like that um, and that was a good experience it was a better experience I was closer to home and I was doing my own thing you know being able to do school and work and and I had always and then once I did leave I figured I wanted to go to University of Georgia and I always wanted to come here and I wanted to be a part of their journalism program and so and do sports so I think that um, that really motivated me and like pushed me to like I decided that school was more important and like a career for me was more important than continuing on the athletic path Got it. So you're now at University of Georgia. Um, you've got one more year of school, and you're working with the tournament this week, yeah. the NCAA championships. What is your role with the championships? So I'm actually in a class uh, for school. Um, it's a main master class, and it's called Sports Media Relations. So we are covering all this. We're dealing with all this social media for Grady Sports. Um, we So I, today I tweeted all during the Stanford and UNC match, um, and it was really cool. You know, I started from the beginning during their doubles, and I got all the way to videos at the end and an interview with the girl who clinched her match, um, Emily. So it was really cool, and that's what we've been doing we're writing match re recaps, like, so we're learning how to do that, and um, just, like, kind of watching and, like, being aware of everything. We've been dealing with, like, the SID and a hint with him and his whole team of people, too, dealing with scores and updates and things like that. So, and we're just, like, trying to capture the moments of the tournament. So, it's been a really cool class so far, and I'm really enjoying it. That's awesome. So, after you graduate, what do you think you're going to be doing? Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Gotta love that question. Um... So Sorry. I'm not no I'm not sure yet. Um, I do have an internship this summer with Eleven Live News. Um, I'm doing more feature shows for them, so I'm not doing sports for them. I'm just um, doing the news. They have a morning show called Atlanta and Company, um, a business show called Biz, and a technology show called Tech Edge. So I'm gonna be doing whatever they want me to do. I'm gonna be doing hospitality for their guests and um, their feature show. So like they're just talking about stuff going on in Atlanta at the time, which I'm actually excited about too, because like, I'm not sure if like totally sports is the route for me, I don't know if, you know, entertainment or hard news is the route for me, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on, so I think that that's going to be a really good thing for me this summer, to see, right now I'm doing sports, and then I'm going to be doing something completely different, so I think just like, um, having the variety of it, and just being able to do everything, and take every opportunity that I, is handed to me, honestly. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. If you could give advice to high school players that are starting their recruiting process for college tennis, what advice would you give to them? I would say keep, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, look around, find something that you really love, find a place that you really love, find the people that you really love, because like those are all very important, I think, for someone as young as 18 going into college, leaving home, like, especially if you're going to go far away, because, I mean, when you do do sports, it can take you all over the country. So I think that you just have to find the right place, and you have to you know, keep your options open. Don't settle. I, I don't think anyone should ever settle until the absolute moment where you feel in your heart almost that this is the place for me and this is where I need to stay. And, you know, and hopefully you do stay because fortunately I didn't stay and I kind of moved around a lot and I've been all over the place, but I'm finally in a place where I'm happy and I love and I'm so happy to say one day that I will graduate from the University of Georgia and I'm an alumni from here and just to like have that experience of like being a bulldog and having that big school experience I think has been really good for me and it's been a way better process for me so I just think for any high school student just go and find what you love find a place where you love because honestly that's all that's going to matter at the end of the day absolutely well that's great advice Elizabeth I wish you all the best I'm so excited to run into you here <laughs> thank, thank you so much Lisa <laughs> Beata Redlicky traveled to Athens to watch both of her sons play in the NCAAs. Her older son, Michael, plays at the University of Arkansas. And in fact, Flo Tennis just did a really nice feature on him, which I'll link to in the show notes. And Beata's younger son, Marty, plays at my alma mater, UCLA. Beata and I first met each other at the U.S. Open when her boys were playing in the juniors there, and we've stayed in touch ever since, so enjoy hearing from Beata. 
I'm with Beata Redlicky, and we're here at the NCAA Championships. The individual tournament's going on now, and Beata actually has two sons playing for two different schools this week. So, Beata, welcome to Athens, first of all. Thank you very much. So, you're here, you've got one son playing at Arkansas, who is... He, how many more years does he have? Is this it he, for him? He's it. Yeah, that's it for him. He okay. is done with tennis, and uh, he's going to be finishing business school. Yes. Yeah. So I knew he was in grad school, but I wasn't sure how many, yes. how much longer he had tennis-wise. And then you've got another son at UCLA, and Marty is going to be. Marty is a junior, going to be a senior next year. So he's got one more year. Yes, he's got one more year. And your life has revolved around these boys and their tennis. What are you expecting when they are done with this journey? What are you going to do with yourself? Well, you know what? Um, it's easy for me because right now they are very far away. One is at, uh, in California and one is in Arkansas. So I'm pretty much, whenever I go there, which is not very often, um, I'm with them, but uh, other than that, you know, I'm by myself uh, with my husband. So, um, what 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 next? I would hope that they would play professional tennis, you know, and I would hope that they would um, try at least to succeed in professional tennis. What's going to happen? I have no idea. So we'll see. And so Michael made the decision to go back to business school, which I thought was so interesting. I just saw the profile that Flow Tennis did on him, which was amazing. I know you're so proud of him what was behind his decision to go back and get his MBA well uh, he was very motivated to play tennis you know he was able to finish Duke in three years so he had two years of eligibility which was very helpful because that gave him a chance to go and pursue the school and tennis which he really was um, happy about and he always wanted to pursue master's degrees um, degree w in uh, business so that just came you know like a good timing for him and he was able to play tennis and do the master's and he's had an incredible year tennis-wise. How has his year been in terms of the academic side? Has he enjoyed it? Very much so. It has been tough because business school is not an easy task to achieve, but um, he he has a very high GPA. He's really, really uh, good in school, so I'm proud of that very much. And uh, yes, and in tennis, uh, he has been doing okay too. So, you know, overall, <laughs> yeah. I'm very happy. Just okay. <laughs> yeah, I, overall, I'm very, very happy. And let's talk about Marty a little bit. He really went far away from home all the way across the country and I know how that feels um, but you had to feel good putting him in the care of Billy Martin and Grant Chen how has that experience been for him and for you as a parent very good you know uh, those two coaches are very um, very easily approachable you know you can really feel very comfortable with them you don't ever feel uh, like you're intruding or anything he they are really nice people just nice yes. good people you know and on top of it very you know billy is a master coach so sure. what's not to like you know marty is a is in a absolutely amazing hands and I'm just hoping that you know the next year is going to be a blast for him and and um, we'll see what happens I hope he's gonna go pro afterwards so well they're both incredible players you know UCLA had kind of a glitch at the end of the season with Gage Brimer their number one player needing surgery and not being able to make the trip here to Athens and Marty has stepped up and he stepped into that number one position and I mean that's a lot of pressure what what did he say about doing that? I mean, is it something he was hoping for, or is it something that he was like, oh my gosh, here I am in the number one spot? Mm, uh, you know what, the, definitely he wasn't hoping for it, because maybe he's hoping for number one spot next year, but he, you know, that was very unfortunate with Gage what happened, and the whole team was pretty much um, not happy about it, obviously. Sure. We, yeah. we were, first of all, we were very worried about him, you know, and uh, thank God, you know, the kids is okay and the kid is going to do great but um, I have to say you know with uh, having um, Gage gone for like the finals I think the team stepped up tremendously I mean you know Marty is 
it's just one piece, but the whole team, I was so proud of them, you know, the regionals and, and to get here to Athens and even here, you know, um, we were close uh, beating Georgia. What can I tell you? Those fans are not really on our side. But you know what? I think the team did, did tremendous uh, job and they stepped up and it was really, really you know, good, 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 considering the situation. For sure, for sure. So as a mom out here watching, what's your favorite part of these championships? Well, obviously my favorite part of these championships is uh, watching my kids play. That's why I came and... Uh, and that's what I enjoy the most. Um, right now, you know, my two boys are out of singles. Unfortunately, they still have doubles, hoping that they will do good in doubles. And um, and we'll see what happens. But I really enjoy it. It's really great atmosphere here, and um, and it's nice. Yeah. So. Well, great. I'm so happy to run into you. I haven't seen you in years, it seems. And yeah, I think we last time we saw each other was in uh, US at US Open. I think that's right. Yes. So it's been a long time, but yes. um, welcome. Welcome to my neck of the woods and good luck to your boys. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I've known Chen Meet Narang since he was in the 12 and unders. And this is a young man who has really kind of carved his own way in the college tennis world without giving anything away. I'm going to just introduce Chen Meet and let him tell his story. I'm here with Chen Meet Nurang, and did I say your name right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Chen-Mi. I've known you forever, so I should know how to pronounce it. Yeah. But we are out at the NCAA Championships, and the doubles tournament is just starting. And it's finally some good weather out here. It's yeah. not too hot, no rain right this minute, knock on wood. Yeah, beautiful day. It's awesome. So Chen Meet came through the juniors and then made a decision when he was ready to go to college to come to University of Georgia not to play tennis, but has stayed in the tennis world. And I, Chen Meet, I'd love for you to talk about what you do here with the Georgia tennis team. Right, yeah, no, uh, I was looking at playing at some smaller schools and uh, my parents wanted me to end, attend a great university, a great academic school. Unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to have a decision where I could do that and play tennis. And uh, I'd been coming to the camps with Morgan and, and a lot of these other guys, Alex Diaz and uh, you know, McGill, Bowerly, and that crew uh, coming to the Georgia tennis camps. And, you know, I'd had Matt Jackson, who was the previous manager, as my counselor, with, along with Jamie Hunt, Drake Bernstein, all those old Georgia tennis guys, and I fell in love with the tradition at Georgia. So uh, when I came to college, Coach had always told me, you know, if, if you don't get to play somewhere, you can come and help out as, as manager. And, uh, and I definitely took him up on that offer, and, and it's been a dream come true. It's an incredible experience. Uh, just being a part of the team, being a part of the tradition, uh, helping out with the guys wherever I can, and getting to hit a ball, getting getting to hit some balls here and there, not too often, but uh, just to be a part of it. I love tennis, and, and so it's definitely a dream come true. Georgia also has a really huge club tennis program. Right. Have you gotten involved with that as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I was a part of it a little bit in my freshman year. I haven't had as much time just because we have practice every day for about three and a half, four hours uh, with conditioning and whatnot. Uh, and then with school, I don't have as much time to actually participate uh, in the club team. But I, I know like a lot of the guys we grew up with in the juniors are part of it. We have a great club tennis program. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get as involved as I thought I would be coming in. Um, but, you know, being a part of the Georgia tennis program itself has just been a dream come true. So I'll take that any day. <laughs> Talk about what your job entails as manager of the team. What is What do you do day to day? So... Uh, I mean, it's not as glorious as it seems when I'm out there on uh, on match days. I mean, behind the scenes, I'm doing the guys' laundry and taking up care of the towels, cleaning up the locker room. Um, and then, you know, the more glorious parts of the job, which are like getting to feed the ball, getting to feed balls here and there. And then uh, We have 11 guys on the team, so occasionally I get to hop in and hit a few balls. Um, and, and so that's mostly what the job entails. But I'm basically there to help out wherever coach needs me, whatever coach, coach needs me, at, and whenever he needs me. And, uh, and whatever he needs me for. So anything for the guys, that's the, that's the role. Well, and during this tournament, when, when the Georgia guys were playing their matches, you were on the court, right. um, moving court to court, right. and when a court would finish, you were out there with the rest of the team cheering on the remaining courts. Right. And what does that mean to you to be able to be part of the team in that manner and be actually on the court with them? Right, I mean, 
I don't know. For me, the team is you know everyone does their role, and 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 I know my role is not necessarily as as big as some of the guys who are playing and competing out there, but. I try to do my job to the fullest, and and so for that, for me, that's you know like getting these guys fired up as much as I can, and helping out wherever I can, getting them grips or gripping the rackets if they need, just getting them prepared so they can go out and do their job. Um, and then after that, like you know, being out on the court, I think uh, what's special about Georgia tennis is like the guy, the bond between the guys is unlike any other team. I, I I'm certain of that. And so when you get out on the court and you're cheering these guys on, I know how much it means to them, and everyone kind of you know, understands that that's your role as part, of, as part of the team is to get these guys fired up and cheer them on. Once a match finishes here, once a match finishes there, you just got to, you know, be aware of what's going on and get your guys fired up. So I try to do that, and I try to be a part of the team as much as I can. How do you think you'll use this experience as team manager as you transition from college to the next phase? Right. Um, well, I mean, you know, still being a part of the competitive environment is always fun. I think... Uh, one of the biggest things, man, is getting to learn from Coach Diaz. Uh, he's a legend. He's incredible. He's like a father to everyone on the team. He looks out for everyone on the team. Uh, and, man, I've learned so much from him over my four years here in terms of work ethic, in terms of how to, like, be a man, how to go about your life, how to do things the right way, um, how to be on time, which is something he's actually worked on, worked with me on a lot. Um, and so, I mean, I think it's night and day for me coming into the program, coming out. You'd think, you know, as manager, I might not uh, get as much out of it as some of the players and whatnot, but I think Coach Diaz has, uh, you know, been incredible to me and in letting me be a part of the team and, and taking me under his wing just like he does the rest of the guys. And I couldn't thank him enough. I mean, you got Willie Glee, who's been back this year for the NCAA run, and, and I'll tell you, Willie Glee is one of the best people I've ever met. And so just being around people like this, I mean, you know, Georgia Tennis has the best coaches in the country, hands down. And, and so uh, getting to be a part of the program and learning from the culture that Coach D, uh, Coach McGill had set, Coach Mandy D has carried on, and then Coach Willie Glee just embodies all of that as well. Uh, so getting to learn from all these guys, and then you got like Nick Wood and Austin Smith who took me under the wing you know, when I was younger, and, and Ben Wag. I mean, all these guys, man, the program. You see, when, when these guys graduate, that really uh, – truly embody all the values that you know coach Manny D uh, instills in the program and, and so it's definitely something special to be a part of that and, and then for me to be able to carry it on too is something I definitely uh, am honored to be a part of. Do you think you'll go into coaching or something tennis related when you're done here? Uh, I mean I don't know I don't know I don't know exactly what I'll be doing honestly I have no idea I love tennis but I love so many other things as well uh, I know I'll be going up to DC to intern the summer and, uh, and and hopefully I'll be playing a lot of summer up there with the city open and whatnot. Uh, it's definitely a fun experience to get get in D.C. There's a lot of tennis people up there, especially up on Capitol Hill. Um, you, you find it's, it's funny when, you know, some of the people you're working for want to get out and hit balls with you. It's always a fun experience. What are you going to be doing with your internship? I'm working for uh, the Georgia Senator, Senator Purdue. Um, and I've heard a couple of those guys in the office love playing some tennis, so I'm, I'm fired up to... You know, maybe uh, hold my own against them up there, which will be fun. Is politics in your future, maybe? Maybe. I mean, I don't know, man. I love talking to people. I love being around people. And so I think uh, that's potentially something that I'd like to go down. I'm, I'm a business major here at Georgia. Uh, and so that's an opening. And I don't know, man. I just love doing so many different things. And so uh, we'll see. We'll see where I go from here. Great. Well, best of luck to you. I'm so excited to see you this week. It's always a treat to run into you, and you've always got a smile and a hug for me, so thank you for that. Ms. Stone, you're, uh, I know your blog helps a lot of people out, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. It's fun. Well, thank you. Thank you. Tammy Duncan and Olga Reinberg are the ultimate college tennis moms. Their sons both play for the University of Georgia Bulldogs, and these ladies get to as many matches as they can possibly get to. They even have matching jewelry with some of the other team moms. They are awesome, and they are in the stands, cheering on these kids, supporting them, even when their own sons are not actually on the court. And it was so fun to run into them. I've known them for a million years. Our sons all came up through the juniors together. And it's just so fun to see them out here supporting their team and really 
just being supporters of college tennis. The Georgia Bulldogs made it to the team semifinals this year. They had a great run, and the Georgia Bulldog top-seeded doubles team has made it to the championship match, and I won't give away the final, but uh, it's been a good run this season. So next up, Tammy Duncan and Olga Reinberg. I'm here with Tammy Duncan and Olga Reinberg, two mamas of Georgia Bulldogs, and their sons have finished their matches today in the semifinals of the team tournament, and both have just been fighting like crazy. And I just wanted to ask you ladies, what are some of the things that you've learned now that your sons are two years into their college tennis careers? What are some of the things you've learned as tennis parents by watching your kids compete out here at University of Georgia? Well, for me, you see a continuation of the hard work that they started before they got to school. But the beauty of it is I'm no longer involved in that process. And they have coaches and who take care of their needs and their schedules and, and how they work. And so for me, it's very freeing because I can come and just enjoy the tennis and I don't have to, I don't feel that immense responsibility of preparing them to be ready for a match anymore. Olga? Well, everything what Stamia say is absolutely correct. I agree. But at the same time, I want to um, say our boys, I say Emil and Walker, very enjoy and very, very uh, proud to be here, to uh, reach this level of tennis, men's tennis, college tennis, and be a Bulldogs is very proud of it. They very participated on each day of everything, learning process, academical, tennis, physical condition, everything, and get it learn every day something. So this is quite a bit... Um, mature especially for Emil I know maturity become f out of him it's much better and uh, getting growing and uh, we just hope and he has a uh, um, great brotherhood experience so the walker and uh, it's very good for us to feel this way because teamwork it's most important since this is individual sport it's very, very important for them for through the life, through the everything. They very, you know, together, very together. And we feel this how the, you know, many develop this group of uh, players is one whole successful team. It's Absolutely. incredible. Yeah. Yes. And I know for both of y'all, you both live in Atlanta. And so you get to come see them play quite a bit. How is that for you, you know, for a lot of parents, their kids go across the country, mine did, you know, so it was difficult, I didn't get to see them play so much, but you guys really get to be Bulldog supporters pretty regularly, yeah. what is that about, you know, what's that like for you? Well, um, yes, this year especially, we have very good, very good uh, group of parents uh, who is either, you know, near, near Athens or, uh, you know, far from Athens, but uh, we're all together. Every parents would love to come and all the time come and support all dogs. Uh, players who is out of country will love them too. Yes. <laughs> they all together. They, yeah. they, 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 they all, you know, they all the same to us. You know, it's I'm not come watch only and cheer for my son. I cheer for everyone. Everybody. Because they try so hard. They make great achievement. But besides this, this is all together. You know, all out. We don't see them. You know, weeks. You know, sometimes at days, and we maybe don't hear from them. But we know. We know for sure they're all together they're supportive each other yeah. and um, of course we are we're for them right it's, fun. it's very fun it's and it's um, when we travel what's really fun is, is also is that we know so many of the kids they're playing right because we've all grown up in the trenches together and you still 
you still cheer for those kids too because we've all been through this together and we know that everybody's working hard. Um, but I agree with Olga, the um, beauty of playing for a team is amazing because in the juniors, it is dog eat dog. Oh yeah. And this has been, um, I see it's so much maturity yes. in, in both our boys. Um, and Manny, and they do a great job of helping with that. And, you know, like um, emotionally, I know for Walker last year, he dealt a lot with perfectionism. And um, and if he didn't win every point, he'd get very angry. Or um, And that's not, that's not him anymore. He's learned to be calm, get himself, how to get himself calm, and play through it. And um, you know, I think Walker had every match last year was three yes. sets. He's hardly had any three set matches this year. And so I see a lot of growth there, and, there. you know, huge improvement. Huge improvement. Huge improvement. Yeah. But I from think both they, boys. I think oh, from, oh, absolutely. I think they yeah. enjoy more. Yes. You know, enjoyable. They make it things enjoyable. Well, you mean in the process too, you know, he always loved his way only. But, <laughs> you know, I can tell you it's a different in the, you know, in the mind and anyway, you know, because play for team. It's absolutely incredible experience. It's great. It's sure. uh, and for us, right? Well, and I can say, I my son came up with your your boys too. So we've all known each other for many many, many years. years. Yeah, and it's for me now. It's fun to watch your boys having such great success at this level. And I mean, my gosh, they're playing in the semifinals of the national championship right now. They're looking really good right now, and um, we're in a rain delay. So by the time this airs, this will all the championships will have finished. But um, I, it's an incredible atmosphere out here. Even in the rain delay, everybody's hanging out, and kind of that excitement and the buzz is still going. Oh yeah, and I have to say, um, going back to the moms, how close we have gotten over the year. Um, you know, because last year it was basically just They're just us, just the two of us <laughs> yeah. at the matches, yes. and it was great. Yeah. But this year we're having so much fun. We go out to dinner together, we go to lunch together, and every and 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 it's not competitive. What changed? Well, we had five freshmen come in, and their moms, yeah, their their mom very uh, moms probably the same philosophy as me and yeah, they, Damien. You yeah, know? They, they follow just these kids come, everywhere. Cheer for everyone in the team, and um, just pass them a love. Yeah, you know, yeah. because yeah. I tell Emil, and you know, we might not look and you win or loss. We just come enjoy to see you yeah. because right. we are big yeah. time. And with all our heart, with all our spirit for your team. Yes. This is only matter. So this is, you know, like a person and talking about only this. Um, this is big, 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 huge difference, you know. Between and, from juniors. Oh, oh, yes. For sure. Oh, yes, absolutely. And absolutely. I see that. I see that with the two of you because, you know, again, I've known you all for so long. And I, I always find you in the stands when I'm at the Georgia matches. And it, it I mean... I remember in the juniors, you know, all of us were watching our kids and we live and die with every point, every yes. game, every yes. match, right? Every call. Every call, mm -hmm. right. Every racket bang and, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, temper yeah. tantrum. Yeah. But, but you guys, there is a calmness. There's an excitement mm -hmm. in terms of cheering, but there's a calmness in terms of watching your child out there competing. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. That's when great. Experience for Emil and Walker are a little bit also, you know, like a continue with his, the friendship, mm -hmm. you know, right. what they have in juniors. Right. Uh, since they've been big competitors, right. but they play together doubles and again big competitors and play together or not play or something we have in and out you know so many so many stories but they keep friendship yeah oh it's and tight. this is it's very huge to us yeah very yes. huge to us i know emil very you know like um in it and this uh um uh, you know like a walker for him it's 
your best friend. Yeah. You know, and I know the same as Walker. Oh, yeah. The same as Walker. And and you know what? And we say this is a good core. You know, after uh, our seniors left last year, yes. I Which think was very sad. I think yeah. Walker and Emil is pretty good. You know, core to keep the team together, especially Walker. Walker is a great. You know, like uh, on it. Everybody loves Walker. Just uh, he is sharp and uh, and well, it's true. It's true. And we're team. talking about this. Yeah. Yes, we're talking about this uh, 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 several times. Uh, just like um, uh, get uh, maybe uh, to uh, wh whatever they boys see. Maybe we see the same, and we are see the same right. as the boys. You know, so it's very good. It's very. It's it's uh, again uh, teamwork. You know. And, uh, college and we still you know very very impressed how boys hold it academically like, you know manage the time uh, all training and accomplish all around it's it's really, really with a lot of support great. a lot of support from a lot of different people yes. whether it's coaches uh, teachers fans parents other parents there's a lot of there's a lot of support it's not it's not the lonely world that junior tennis was. And they support each other. Sure. Between the players, they support each other. Yeah. They know well, you know, we had we had five freshmen come in. Well, I was just getting ready to ask you about that. And and what how y'all feel your role as the moms of, of the old guys and old, they're only finishing their second year, but this is a young team this year. This young team. Yeah, so wh how, what's y'all's role with the, the new parents that came well, in we, this year? We were both, I think, very intentional to, to uh, meet the moms mm -hmm. and, and and encourage them and you know and it started off you know I think everybody was just kind of tiptoeing around you know because um, well, you know, very not, uh, open and welcome but Let's yeah but, but we yeah we wanted everybody well, there and then yes. and then all, like all of a sudden when we started playing after Christmas when the when the indoor season started mm -hmm. that's when everything just started chilling everybody was coming to the matches we were laughing we were cutting up we could tease about our kids and you know what are they doing what are they saying and um, but we Good job, Tammy. Yeah, we did a good job. <laughs> I can no, but, but, we, but we were very intentional about that because right. because if 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 we're together as moms and families, then that carries over with the boys as well because yes. because the boys they know that we're all close. Yeah. Like, yes. And I you know and I. I know Walker. I know Walker loves for us Let's to be here. Let's do it, Let's Christmas. Do it. Oh, baby. I know. Yes. Um, so. I, you know, for Walker and Emil both, I think they both like having us moms mm -hmm. there Get together, together, and, have and, ha loving, and having fun. And um, oh yeah, they always really ask, you know, did you meet this mom? Yeah. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. Have you, you had, have you had lunch? Well, you where'd y'all go eat last night? Yeah. 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 You know, and we report them. We report them. You know what's going on <laughs> yeah. between yeah. us. Yeah. There, you know, there's an, there's an interest to, in what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. I think it's important for for them to know we are all together. We don't have you know any you know like nothing. Uh, nothing. You know, we just all together like a like a huge 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 operation, you know, That's and awesome. this is very supportive to them. Also, I want to say, uh, we have a group message, yeah. text message, text message. Yes, among between the parents, yeah. even, yeah. even our boys, who, uh, players who are not on the field, you know, right. so all, all of them, everybody, everybody, okay. everybody. Yeah. everybody. It doesn't everybody. matter if they're in the doesn't lineup matter. or no. Doesn't no. matter, no, so no, no. always, you know, they, they need to know what's going on and, you know, and they also very, very supportive. Very, very supportive. Very supportive. Very a lot impressive. of them travel too. Mm -hmm. Though even the ones where the yes. kids aren't in the lineup. Yes. Sure. Yes. Not, not all the time, but but they but they do make a, a, mm -hmm. an effort anytime they can. And and um, mm -hmm. well, that speaks stuff. very highly about this program, don't you think? Because that's Absolutely. a big commitment. No, it's to a go huge and commitment. know your child's not even going to be on the court. Oh yes, it's a huge oh, yes. commitment. Yeah. But you oh, know, yes. but these boys get over here and. They realize, I mean, from a distance, I mean, when Walker, when we first moved to Atlanta and the first NCAA tournament we came to, Walker's eyes were as big as saucers. And from that point on, he knew if there was any way he wanted to play at the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. So this is a dream. And I know for, I'm sure, well, for Emil too. Yeah. For Emil too. Well, Emil, yeah. Emil was uh, um, thinking about, but honestly, it's... Um, 
Well, it's quite a bit for us was um, debating, uh, but Emil was so impressed by um, many um, note and everything you know and he said oh my gosh finally i don't even think you know they're looking for me you know <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was it was very you know well, like and, the, and there's there's and you know the coaches have integrity and 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 one of the things that i have noticed is manny gets to know these kids and he knows their personalities and he coaches each child differently mm -hmm. and you can see you can see the fruits of that on the court sure you know because everybody responds to something different and Manny is great at, at coaching these kids and um, understanding understanding them and there's so much integrity on this team yes. which is for me is very very important and the kids Yes. He yeah. brings in he brings in good kids. He does. Great. Yeah. yeah, we call them awesome dogs. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and so we kind of nicknamed us. Pamela Ponwith calls us the Mom Squad, Mom Squad. and I call yeah. us the Mama Dogs. Mama so you know, yes. we we're we're kind of. I think we're, we're kind of, yeah. I think we're kind of a presence. I, I think y'all need a logo and a T-shirt. Oh, I think. Well, well we, we have jewelry. jewelry. We're doing I see your jewelry. jewelry. We have jewelry. I'll, I'll, I'll need <laughs> yes, to take a picture yes. of that to <laughs> post with the podcast for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But uh, but. Think. Uh, yeah. Well, well y'all are awesome. Great. Is there anything else you want parents of aspiring college players or existing college players to know? To be patient and go. You can't dream too big and hard work and but go visit your schools because there's it's nothing a, like playing college tennis it's important it's important for them we're here all the time or as much time we can yeah. it's very important they play with joy and proud and this is the greatest experience ever yeah. college tennis. college tennis is is, is great, great. Well, I will close with that. That's perfect. Thank you, ladies. And finally, Francesca DiLorenzo. Fran is a sophomore at Ohio State, and I've actually interviewed Fran before. I did her recruiting profile for TennisRecruiting.net when she was making her decision about where to play college tennis. I'm sure the folks at Ohio State are very, very pleased that she chose them because since being at Ohio State, Fran has won three ITA National Championships, the Riviera All-American Championships, and the USTA ITA National Indoors twice. She has been a force to be reckoned with on the tennis court, and she is an incredible young woman who has a very bright future ahead of her. Enjoy. I'm with Francesca DiLorenzo, who plays for Ohio State, and Ohio State had a phenomenal tournament. Fran, can you talk a little bit about what it meant to you to be part of such a great team this year? Yeah, it meant a lot, especially for our seniors here. Um, obviously, them being there last year, we worked all year to hopefully do well in this tournament. And, I mean, every day at practice, they led the team. And for us to be able to come out and make our first semi semifinal appearance this year, it was pretty incredible. And you know, the group was so special. I don't think we'll ever have something like that again, or at least with that group. You know, hopefully we'll be able to make more history. But it was a really special group this year. And the guys did well, too. What was that like, having both teams really just shine this week? It was awesome. It was really nice to represent Buckeye Nation. Um, we were supporting each other, both teams. You know, we're a, a close on both sides with the guys and the girls, so it was really fun to watch them and then have them cheer us on. And it's just always nice to see another Buckeye team do well, so it was cool. Very cool. Now the individual <laughs> tournament has started, yeah. and you – have a lot of pressure on you at yeah. this event. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's it's not uh, easy by any means, and it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily fun dealing with that pressure, you know, having that all year and being number one, going out there expecting expected to win every match, and I lost first round, and I think I just put so much pressure on myself, you know, thinking about this tournament, you know, the potential of what ifs, what if, if I do this well, if I win, I could go the wild card US Open, you know, I put so much 
pressure and it got to me. So, and I think that showed, I mean, like the one and two seeds and another girl who's like ranked five seeds out. So it's kind of crazy. And, you know, a lot of these players, top players are going out and just got to be able to handle that better. Because obviously that's going to come and you just got to be able to deal with that pressure. And so I'm trying to work on that continuously. So hopefully eventually I'll be able to do that better. Well, you're young. You've got time. You've got your doubles coming up this afternoon. And can you talk a little bit about your expectations and the doubles draw now that the singles draw is done? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to take it match by match here. Miho, uh, my partner, is an unbelievable player. She's un, um, undefeated in singles. She should be in the singles tournament. She just plays lower in the lineup, so doesn't get to get that opportunity as much. So my goal is to make her an All-American, really. And hopefully we can do that because she's just such a strong player. She's helped our team so much. So hopefully that, that's my goal to make her an All-American. So hopefully we can do that. I watched y'all compete against Stanford the other night. Mm -hmm. It was an unreal match, and um, I was watching Miho's match at the end. You got off court pretty quickly in that one. (laughs) But um, Miho resorted to an underhand serve. Mm -hmm. What's up with that? Um, You know, I think sometimes she just doesn't have the most confidence in her serve. You know, she has a good serve, but if it's not going in, you know, why not go to the underhand where she knows she can rely, I mean, make it nine times out of ten. So... I mean, if that's what works, that's what works, you know, as long as you can make the serve and make the girl hit an extra ball back. I mean, I'll do anything. I'll be ready at the net for doubles. So um, I tell her, just make the girl play. So whatever she has to do, she'll do it. Yeah, she's unbelievable um, under pressure out there, too. Yeah, her, so She's been in that position multiple times, and for her to close that out and make it even three all, it was just put um, so much less pressure on Gabby, and, and it was just uh, it was incredible just to watch her come back and fight back a set down, and, and she just never gives up. She's an incredible player. Yeah, that's very cool. Let's shift and talk a little bit about the academics at Ohio State and how that's been for you balancing your classwork with your tennis it was definitely difficult um my first semester was rough for me academically especially because i missed i think four or five weeks of school and i just didn't know how to handle it my senior year of high school was really easy for me i got a, i had two classes so and then i went from that to 18 credits um which is the maximum you can take and and then again on top of that missing four weeks of school so i just didn't know how to handle it i had no balance you know uh, i just wanted to do all tennis a little bit of school and i had zero so social life so I really wasn't enjoying myself at the time and then once I at the end of the fall I dropped some classes too which helped (laughs) but at the end of the fall I found a rhythm and my teammates really helped me and and I got into it and and I just found a balance and I think that's the most important thing because then I started having fun and and relaxing a little bit and enjoying myself but I'd say it definitely takes a little bit of time to get used to it and, and, and adjust at least from for me going from high school and probably for most kids from going from homeschooling I wasn't homeschooled but I only took two classes so it was relatively easy for for me in high school yeah and and I mean I think that's that's a, an important point to make is that transition from high school to mm-hmm. college if you could redo this past year is there anything you would change in terms of helping you to find that balance that first semester um, yeah, I would definitely take more classes my senior year of high school just to get me more prepared for college because I just had such an easy year. I mean, it was ridiculous. I was going to school for an hour and a half, and then I was done just because I did all my credits earlier in my high school. Um, so it's just it was too almost too easy for me in high school, and then I got to college, and I was just so unprepared. But I think also missing school didn't help me as much. Um, and I took two, I would probably start out taking some easier classes. I tried to take some harder classes my first semester. So I think the biggest thing is go into it easy um, and then adjust from there. Maybe second semester of freshman year, once you have a balance, take some harder classes. But especially if you know if you're going to miss a lot of school, take some easier classes just to get used to it because it's really going to catch up to you if you miss all those classes. And then online, take Taking online classes obviously helps. For me, the more online was the better because then, I mean, I didn't miss as many in class, but it helps you find that balance for sure. Are you guys done for the year at Ohio State, or do you still have to go back? Yeah, I'm done for the year. Some of the girls are taking summer classes, but I opted out of that just because I wanted to focus on tournaments, so I'm done for the summer and the year. 
Great. And so what's on tap for the summer for you? I'm um, just hoping to play a lot of tournaments. Uh, I think I'm scheduled to play some 25s, maybe some 50s, depending on how my confidence is and how I'm playing. Um, I think but I think I'm going to start out in Sumter, South Carolina, and then Louisiana, and then I think there's one in Auburn. So I'll start with those three, see how it goes. Cool. Very cool. And will you try to get into the qualies for the U.S. Open now? Or That's, that's definitely a goal of mine. Um, obviously, depending on how the summer goes and depending on how I'm doing, um, I I think typically they judge off of who does the best in the summer. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see after the summer. But yeah, it's definitely a goal of mine. And and hopefully I can go into the summer with some confidence, at least training hard. And, you know, and we'll see how it goes. It's a long summer. So there's a lot of tournaments to play. and, And hopefully I'm ready. How are you managing to stay healthy with all of this? Because I, I think that's one of the biggest challenges for college players is, you know, getting enough sleep, eating right, making sure their body's right. How are you handling that? Yeah, it's definitely tough. I mean, I think we played like 33 matches this season, so it adds up for sure. Um, I just try to prepare as best as I can, uh, whether it's just taking an ice bath or stretching. I, I see the trainer every morning, so she sees me a lot in there. Um, so I think that helps a lot. I get stretched out. Uh, you just got to do the little things. It really counts. It adds up in the end because by the end of the season, you're feeling it, whether it's physically, mentally, whatever it is. It's been a lot, uh, a lot of traveling, you know, long years. So you got to really start from the beginning, from January. Um, just taking care of your body, stretching after matches, eating right. I've been really focusing on eating well and keeping my body in shape as best as I can just to stay healthy through the long run. And I think I've done a decent job at that. I've had some, a few injuries here and there, nothing that's taken me out of the game, though. So that's, that's um, the biggest thing. As long as I can keep playing, I'm just going to try to work through it as much as I can. That's great. Can you share with my listeners what a typical day looks like for you at Ohio State? Because I think it's it's good for potential student athletes to understand what they are signing on for when they sign on to play D1. Yeah, definitely. Um, our day starts at, I get up probably at like 7 30 maybe um we practice at 8 30 so i'll go to the training room first and then from there i'll start practice at 8 30 to 10 30 10 45 and then at 11 we have lifting so 11 to 12 we lift or do some sort of conditioning if it's not lifting one day we'll do our running and sprints the other day or speed school we call it and then from 12 o'clock i'll grab something to eat from our fuel zones just a sandwich or something and then from there i'll go to class so 12 30 is my first class so 12 30 um to 1 30 i'll have class and then 1 30 to 2 30 another class and then once i'm done at 2 30 i try to go back out for a second hit so i'll probably get there at three and then three to four thirty i'll hit and then i get back at five so then at five um five to six i'll go home like get something to eat maybe and then six to eight i'll go study at the or study hall um and then i get back at like 8 30 and then maybe i'll just hang out at the apartment for a little bit and then i'll study some more and then get to bed around 11 and then start the day over again so it's a long day it's a full day it's a full day, and when you're traveling, there, yeah. that adds a whole other component. Absolutely. Traveling's, traveling becomes a lot. You know, you're missing, we leave probably on Thursday, so then you're missing Thursday, Friday. So you try to really work your schedule out well, so you have the majority of your classes Monday to Thursday, or Monday to Wednesday, at least for labs, or anything that you can't really make up that's really difficult to make up. So um, it's really important to schedule well in the in the spring because it adds up. You're missing all those classes. You're missing almost every other week week you're home one week and then gone the next so you really got to schedule well to stay on top of your schoolwork yeah for sure what are you majoring in uh, sports industry yeah and what do you want to do do you know or, or is the plan to go on tour after school for yeah, now um definitely i would love to play professional tennis that's always been a goal of mine so whether it's in two more years or um after this year i don't know but um it's definitely a goal of mine so i'm just gonna see where i'm at at the end of the summer um but yeah sports industry is just it's easier for i love sports so i gotta be doing something active either way so i can never really see myself in an office setting but um it's also realistic i'm not doing um, medical school here so um it's an easier major i guess you could say but i really do love sports so i think i would do it anyways if it was difficult but um yeah i don't really know like potentially coaching after i give it a try on the tour um we'll see but i definitely am gonna give it a try 
That's awesome. And what else would you like to share with, let's say, high school kids who are thinking about college tennis? Any words of wisdom uh, other than the ones you've already shared with us? Yeah, I mean, I would say for those thinking about college tennis, it's probably the best decision you can make to go to college. Um, It's something that, you know, I think you get better in and everyone should give it a try, you know, especially people in Europe that think it's like the end of the road. It's not the end of the road, I promise you. It's extremely competitive. It's very difficult and you'll see that the level is getting higher and higher. Um, but it's, it's a challenge, you know, to, you really, really good. If you want to play tennis after, um, college, you've got to stay extremely focused. There's many, many times where, um, we've done act- activities that I can't go to or, you know, hung out at night going out. You know, you really gotta, you gotta sacrifice a lot to, um, to do well. So it's just, it's making those small decisions here and there, but it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, you have, eight, nine girls or guys, whatever, um, that support you every day and that you find, you have someone to hit with every day. So it's an unbelievable opportunity. It's something you'll never experience anywhere else, I think. Even other team settings, you know, you experience that for a week, maybe Davis Cup, Fed Cup, but this is really something that will stay with you for a lifetime. I have friends now for forever, I think, and it's an unbelievable experience. And I just can't say enough how much I support it. One last question for you. Your dad was here supporting you and cheering for you this week, and I had the opportunity to meet him. What a sweet, sweet man. What did it mean to you to have him out here? It means a lot. He's a super busy guy, so um, for him to take the time out of his schedule to come out and support me, it means a lot. He's really into the tennis more so than my mom and the rest of our family, so he really gets it. And for him to be here and watching me and watching the team, it's it's so nice to have someone from home just – that gets tennis and gets like knows all the names and everything like that it's really fun to have him here so i was really glad he was here do you make contact eye contact with him during your matches or do you try to put it out of your head um i try to put it out of my head a little bit you know i uh i mean i pump it up at him sometimes to just give me some give him some support and myself as well it's just really nice having him up there you know i try not to rely too much on him because at the end of the day it's just me and my opponent on the court and i gotta do it by myself but it's definitely nice to have him up there and finally, your junior coach is, I know, one of your biggest fans. Mm-hmm. Do you still stay in touch with Anne, and will you have an opportunity to work with her at all during the off season? Yeah, I definitely stay in touch with Anne. We're always talking during season. You know, she's really nice checking up on me a lot. You know, when I have a tough loss like yesterday, immediately texting me. You know, it's okay. I mean, it'll it'll be okay. Things will get better. Don't worry. You know, so she always has my back, which is really really nice. Um, yeah, we'll see what we're doing. For for the summer it's tough she's in florida so and i want to play a lot of tournaments so i'm hoping i can go down and hit with her a little bit but we'll see depending on the tournament schedule and and um, when i can fit some time in but hopefully i'll be able to meet up with her great thanks so much for chatting with me thank you i'm super excited to be here thank you okay good luck today thanks Congratulations to all the winners of the 2017 NCAA Division I Tennis Championships. First off, to the University of Virginia men and to the University of Florida women. Unbelievable run and wish you all the best moving forward. And in the individuals, big congratulations to Ty Kwiatkowski of UVA, a senior from the U.S. who hopefully will be receiving a wild card for the U.S. Open as a result of winning the NCAAs. And on the women's side, Brianne Miner, a sophomore from University of Michigan, also American, who will hopefully be at the U.S. Open this year. On the double side, huge congrats for the comeback from Oklahoma's Andrew Harris and Spencer Papa, and also uh, from Ohio State's Francesca DiLorenzo and Miho Kawasi. Both of those teams came back from a set down to win their matches in a 10-point super tiebreaker. Congratulations to everyone who competed. It's been a great two weeks. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the Parenting Aces podcast, my little inside look at the 2017 NCAA Tennis Championships from Athens, Georgia. Every time I'm out at a college tennis match, I can't help but think of my friend Saul Schwartz and 
his mission to save college tennis. And to that end, we have two, that's two Saul Schwartz Save College Tennis All-In Tennis Tournaments happening this summer. One in July in Atlanta, Georgia at the Georgia Gwinnett College campus and one in August back in Baltimore at the Suburban Club. Registration is now open for both of those events. So if you go to the Universal Tennis Events page, you'll see the links to register for that and I will put them in the show notes as well. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I, I've so enjoyed interviewing everybody, seeing some old friends, meeting some new friends, and I hope that it inspired you to put the NCAA championships on your bucket list if you haven't done so already. And maybe, just maybe, we can convince the NCAA Tennis Committee to let UGA host again in the future, maybe starting in 2023, because that venue is just so incredible. I mean, even the coaches from the other schools are in favor of letting UGA host. And so I'm really, really hoping that the UGA folks get it back and that I have an opportunity once again to watch this great event in such a wonderful facility. That's it for this week's podcast. We'll see you next time on Parenting Aces. I'm Lisa Stone, and you've been listening to the Parenting Aces podcast. For tennis parents, by a tennis parent. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to us and write a review on iTunes. For more information on navigating the junior and college tennis journey, visit us online at parentingaces.com. As always, a huge thank you to our sponsor, tennisballs.com.